requirement in the rules for a combat robot is you have to have a main power switch. It has to be able to completely cut off power to everything on the robot. So it has to handle all of the amperage that your robot is capable of drawing, has to go through this switch. And there's, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can use just a, a, a power switch. You can use a removable link where you physically pull a wire out that, that makes a connection. But you have to, wait, have to wait to physically disconnect the power on the robot. And one of the ways of doing that is the Wayachi power switch. Now, they sell a couple of different sizes. This is a larger one that I would use for like a heavyweight or a middleweight. And I've been, I've been pretty happy with how they work. It's, it's fairly compact. It's lightweight. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. It can handle a lot of amperage. And so it's, a, it's been a, my choice for, for turning on uh, bigger combat robots. Now, I don't want to get into the controversy of whether switches or links are better. Everybody's got their opinions. However, switches are better than links. Switches are better than links. Switches are way better than links. Switches are better than links. I don't want my robot turning off randomly. It's got to keep running, right? <laughs> Listen, switches are better than links. Switch or links? Why not both? I'll tell you what, folks. I used to use switches, but you know what? Every time I did, nothing but itches everywhere, folks. And I discovered what it takes. Removable links, folks. That works every time. Pre-charged, built right in. One dollar. You know what's in here? Winning. In every group, there's that one guy. And, well, obviously, <laughs> Martin's that guy. One of the issues I see with people using this switch is they, they use it incorrectly. Um, so to turn it on and off, you use a, a, an Allen key. It's 530 seconds, okay? You turn it counterclockwise to turn it on and turn it clockwise to turn it off as it's labeled on the front of the switch. And you can feel there's no resistance in the on position. When it gets to where you feel resistance is when it starts to go into the off position. And half a turn turns your robot off. And for some reason, everybody thinks they just need to keep cranking this thing down. And if you get all the way to the bottom, the, the switch itself is just plastic. You can break the switch. So you don't want to go all the way down until you can't turn it anymore. You don't want to go all the way out on until you can't turn it anymore. Either way can break the switch. You can't turn the robot more on or more off. Okay, so let's look at what it looks like inside to make it a little more understandable. So here's one disassembled. I'll take the top off. Okay, obviously this is a used switch, which is why it's a little on the dirty side. So there's these these silver contacts here. That this is what makes your connection, and this big bolt that goes in and out that raises or lowers that so that it makes that connection. So you bring it up until those contacts touch. And that's how you make your connection. Screwing it further up doesn't make it turn more on. Likewise, when you turn the screw in and it makes that bar go down and pull away from the contacts, it turns it off. You can't turn it more off than off. So driving the switch all the way in either direction can break the plastic. Right. So let's go to the robot now and we'll see how one actually works. So here we have the power switch mounted in the robot on the back. Okay, and the access to turning it on is through the back of the robot. So we've got, already got the wrench in. One of the things you have to have when you power up your robot is you have to have an indicator to, to show that it's, that it's lit. So right now there's resistance on the switch. When I come out to turn it on, it's on. There's no resistance. Okay, you can tell that it's on. Okay, I don't need to go all the way out. Just go out far enough that it's on. The one thing that people catch wrong is when they turn it off, so I'm starting to feel resistance, that is off. But you can see it takes a bit for that light to go out. This is normal. You've got capacitors and speed controls, and it takes a bit for that, that power to bleed out of the system. So don't think you have to keep cranking it down just because the light didn't go immediately off. It takes a few seconds. But this is literally on and off. You can do everything in less than a turn on this switch. You don't need to go all the way in and out to do this. 
I want to thank my uh, fellow competitors for their little pieces of this video. It's always fun. It's a great group of people. I, I love the people that compete with. And of course, thanks to Wayachi for making the switches that we all love and use. So there's that. Um, on the channel, uh, next up, you're going to start seeing some footage coming from the Robo Games event. So we're going to have some fight footage and some damage footage and some interesting stuff along the way. So uh, uh, make sure you keep watching because we've got some really cool stuff heading your way. And if you like any of what we're doing, go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll have more content coming your way.